Jenna, what, what happens if we've already done it wrong? Yeah. What happens, <laughs> what, what happens if we went rogue and did like blue and tips of turquoise because I messed up? You lost me at two needles. What's a B? <laughs> <laughs>I'm Janice Meeting. I'm Sichangu and Minakanju Lakota in Rolled Cheyenne River Lakota Sioux Tribe, and I play Regan Wells on Rutherford Falls. Here today, we have three of the writers. We have Marcos Luibenos, we have Ty LeClaire, we have Tazba Chavez. Um, I was also a writer on Rutherford Falls. And we have our three co-executive producers, Sierra Teller Ornelas, Ed Helms, and Mike Schur. As I understand it, what is happening now is you, Jana, are going oh. to lead a beading tutorial. And while you do that, I will be asking questions from this magic bowl of questions that was provided to us uh, so that we can all talk about our experience of making the show. I have been uh, beading since I was about seven or eight years old, and I was taught by my grandmother. Beadwork is a really popular traditional art form that um, a lot of natives practice including myself it's also it was in, in used as an incredible form of storytelling so like um a long time ago and even today um native women would be dresses that had uh, traditional stories and so it was a way for mothers to educate their children it was a way to like mark histories um so it's really embedded not only just as an art form but also um just culturally in, in various nations today we're going to bead a adorable little peacock in honor of peacock where you can find Rutherford Falls. This peacock, we're going to use the style called two needle applique. And um, we have two needles attached to two different threads. I went ahead and threaded the first needle for you. So this is going to be um, called our line thread. So this is where we're going to like lay down, like uh, put the beads on this needle, thread them onto this line thread. And then this needle that is not attached yet to your pattern is our tacking thread, okay? And our tacking thread, what we're going to do is we're gonna slowly follow the lines of the pattern of the feathers with uh, the green color that I sent to you, like the outline of a green peacock feather. Um, so I put my beads in the lid of this kit you want something shallow that you can dig the beads out of? These beads are extremely small. Do you have any that are more perhaps like basketball size that would be easier to get onto a needle? Or do you have reading glasses for me? <laughs> <laughs> I will read the first question. What was the weirdest moment in the writer's room? And I think to answer that question, we should go right to our showrunner and fearless leader, Sierra Teller Ornelas. That is so hard. Okay, so the weirdest moment in our writer's room would have to be COVID. <laughs> like, I don't uh, know. It's a terrible answer, but that's pretty much, that was the weirdest moment that I can remember. It was not. What, wasn't, what, what was the moment that it was like, oh, we're shutting down? We were in the middle of our production meeting for the, for the pilot. We yeah. were literally, for the first time, the entire oh my crew God. had gathered around, around a big table. We were going through the pilot scripts and uh, Sierra was um, it was introducing herself by naming her clans, which is uh, which you should do right now. Let's pause for a second and, and name name your clans. I don't like to do it when when someone tells me to do it because I'm a natural contrarian. Do it. So it's like I'm not gonna do it, Dad. I'm not just gonna say my clans all the time, but I will because I should because my mom will be mad if I don't. Um, uh, my name is Sierra. I'm Navajo, born of the Edgewater clan. I'm Edgewater, born for the Mexican people. So now imagine, if you will, we're all gathered around this table and we're so excited because we're finally starting the, uh, the process of shooting the first episode of this show. As Sierra is saying her clans, I get a text that says uh, where everything is shutting down because of this global pandemic. That was, it. I mean, besides being scary and, and awful, it was also, I think you're probably right, the weirdest moment. Uh, Ed, what was your favorite line from the show? My favorite line of the show. Oh, it's probably it's in the trailer. It's when Bobby Yang, uh, played by the amazing Jesse Lee, I say something like, "You can't change history, Deirdre." And then Bobby says, "Unless you have a time machine." And then Bobby goes, "And you don't, because if you did, you'd go back 
and tell yourself not to buy that blazer. And <laughs> it kills me. Every time I, I've seen the trailer now 300 times, and it makes me laugh every single time, and I can't wait to see it in the episode again because it's going to make me laugh again. All right, Jana, favorite line from the show? There's a line, uh, a, a scene that I did with Michael Gray Eyes, who plays Terry Thomas, and basically kind of complaining to him and saying, this is like, nobody wants to work with me because I'm a city Indian and I'm successful. And, and he says, you're not successful. <laughs> <laughs> I love that too. That's so funny. Let's do a show and tell and, and Q&A real okay, quick. Cause... What do we got? Like us, and I'm obviously a beginner beater, but if I were a very proficient beater, such as yourself, this would take, this peacock might take 17 years. <laughs> or... <laughs> this amazing cartoon peacock. Uh... <laughs> uh, Nathan and Regan gift each other edible arrangements in the show. Whose idea was that and why? I think, I feel like Marco should answer this. It was sort of my idea, but also Sierra's idea. We, we've we been friends for over a decade now, and we started, uh, we when we were first starting our friendship, it was sort of like in any relationship where you kind of like hide the trash parts of yourself before you like reveal them. <laughs> and there was one time where Sierra, like in deep confidence uh, told me, she was like, I secretly love edible, edible arrangements. Awesome. And I also was like, me too. And we talked about how like all we want is someone to send us one. And so and now over time, anytime uh, either one of us has a success, we send the other an edible arrangement, but we always do it from a fake celebrity. So I sent one, uh, I think from Barack Obama, one, did. From, one from Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler to wish me well on the show. It was a really <laughs> wonderful moment. <laughs> this is, a, this is a, a question that's designed to make you do impressions of the characters, okay? So, uh, Ed, do a one second impression of the following characters without using words. Terry. That's really good. Oh, That's a really good Terry. Good. Wow, he's an actor. Well done. All right, <laughs> Jana, do a one second impression of, uh, of Nathan without using words. Is that, I feel like I, I feel like that was like a like if the Fonz was on Crystal Meth. <laughs> like, <laughs> because my bangs are so flop, they're like very like, <laughs> first braid. <laughs> All right, let's get a beating update. How are we doing, Jenna? Yeah, everybody, show your work. Oh my gosh, you're so fast. What does snag mean, and how is it used in the show? Snag means getting on with someone. At least that's what it is in my area. But there's also differences, right? There's regional differences yeah. in the way snag is used. So you're you're from the Northeast. You, Snagging, you're hooking up. Yeah, but then Sierra, you are from Arizona, and what do you say? We say snagging out. And it can also be a noun, right? Yeah, like he he or she is a snag. Oh, that yeah. that's how it that that's that's the origin. Then that makes sense. That means like he like that person is a catch kind of like that's yeah, like, like a catch. That's who she's like hooking up with, yeah, or he's hooking up with. They're old snags. They're snags. yeah, they're old snags. Aw. Yeah, here's a question for you. Uh, and again, I'm I'm just the messenger, so don't get upset at this. Uh, the question is, who do you like the most out of Mike, Ed, or Sierra? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's answering the question? Anna. Oh. Me? Yes, Jana. Oh God, I'm sweating so much. <laughs> there is a there is a right answer. We all know what it is. You can just say it. Um, I'm I'm gonna say Ed. Oh no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm, wow. I'm, wow. You know, know, lateral violence, Jana. Sierra's my favorite. I feel like we're maybe sisters from different misters. Yeah. Sierra um made it possible for me to make it to the second uh screen test of the show because uh on the way there i crashed my car spun out of control rammed my 2004 ford escape into the side of the 134 <laughs> uh totaled it immediately <laughs> and really the first thing that came to my mind was i gotta make it to the screen test so before i called the police i called sierra to be like help i gotta get to the screen test i crashed my car and she came and picked me up and we like two little criminals abandoned my 
broken car <laughs> on the side of the highway and drove to Universal. Yes, we did. Ed, uh, this is a little bit of a thinker, but what do you hope people come away with after watching this show? Joy. I agree. No, I really just hope that people get huge chuckles out of this show. And I think that there are some opportunities to think and reflect a little bit. And if that is, if, if that happens for people too, then that's awesome. Um, but uh, I really hope that this show puts some positive energy into the world. I love that. Mm -hmm. Hard to agree. Everybody show Jana your B to work. And then Jana will go give a, give everybody a letter grade. <laughs> <laughs> I like Marcos is doing his own thing. It's nice. Sierra, let's get closer here. Oh, oh, that looks great. And you know, it's something. Oscar. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. It looks There's nice. A little bit splotchy, but I, if I had reading glasses on, cause I'm, I'm 90, then I could actually do this, but I feel like I'm making like like 20 or 30 punches through from the back just to find the right spot. Yeah, that's normal. Okay. Marcos, yes. what, is, what is the key to writing the perfect joke for Ed Helms? Oh, uh, I feel like the key to writing the perfect joke is uh, always having like a one word, uh, one word after the joke. Uh, that he can put his Ed Helm spin on, like uh, when Bobby gives that zinger in the trailer and you go, what? It's so funny. <laughs> Every time, it's so good. So I feel like giving like a one word, just Ed Helm's reaction is always uh, the key to it, I feel like. Ty, what's the key to writing the perfect Janish meeting joke? I want to say it's like giving Jenna a little space to sit with the line after i feel like there's always like a little bit like of a a, a, a regan uh response either it's with the eyes like i remember the trailer michael gray as says like uh, it's not worth you know being friends with white people and you do this like, oh, like a cast <laughs> here's one uh tazba i guess go ahead and answer this one can viewers expect to see beadwork and other native art uh like what we're doing here on the show Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we see um, beadwork, which um, Jana contributed to, which is very exciting. Um, we see uh, native fashion designed by native women. So a lot of the wardrobe, which I consider like art, um, is all over Regan, which is exciting. There's also like really uh, modern day artifacts involved. One of the, one of my favorite examples of this is the, the clouds in the background of the poster were beaded by Jana. So like it made its way into the, the sort of like emotional graphic language of our show too, in the coolest way. Oh, hey, Ed and Jana, how did you prepare to be best friends on screen? Did what and 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 was the writing was being writers together part of the process? Yeah, I mean, I think hanging out in that writers' room for months, just palling around with no stakes, like you know, we hadn't cast Jana at that point, so there was there was no context to that friendship other than we're just working together and having fun and making each other laugh. It certainly made the transition to scene partner a lot easier and just more organic feeling. Even though you have done so many films and uh, TV shows in your career, like at your core, you're a very good improviser. And like we have very similar comedy roots. And for me, at least to be able to play with Ed, it was so helpful to have like a, a rapport a real rapport, but also like an on-screen rapport, which is, you know, you have to like add, uh, like invent jokes that friends share and, and that kind of stuff. Um, it was yeah. really easy. It was really natural. All right, everyone. Um, we are rounding Needles down. <laughs> <laughs> Needles down, beadwork up. Everybody show your peacock to the camera. Well, I was about to put this one down, so let me just hold it up there. Oh, beautiful. Um, everybody did an amazing job, especially great work um, from Ty LeClaire. <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't have done it without you. 
my fingers are literally bleeding. <laughs> I just, I just want to say these beads are too big. I'm used to working with much smaller beads. Mine would, mine would, be, better. Mine would be better if the beads were smaller. I'm just going to say. Everyone, thank you so much for being on this uh, beading circle Zoom call. And to you out there, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to tune in to Rutherford Falls, now streaming on Peacock.